Hi guys, it's Ben here with a preview of Liverpool versus Crystal Palace as the Reds play their first home league game of the campaign. So off the back of that big win in Hoffenheim, Liverpool now take on Crystal Palace, a side they've already faced in pre-season this year and beaten them. But it's league form against Palace over the last few years at Anfield that hasn't been great. They've beaten us on their last three visits to L4. Obviously the Gerrard farewell, they beat us 3-1. And in the last two seasons, they've beaten us 2-1. Obviously last year, uh, Benteke with two goals. Hopefully that won't be repeated, but it is always tricky opposition. They've got a lot of pace. And obviously Benteke is a big focal point for them up front. No Zaha for them this time though, which will be crucial. I know we've struggled against them uh, when he's been in the side. Obviously Dan Lovren's had nightmares with him and uh, would not have fancied us uh, against him as well. But Liverpool going into this game off the back of a huge win. The confidence should be pretty high, even though it wasn't a convincing display out in Germany. We got the win, we got the 2-1 deficit that we're going to take back to Anfield for the game in a few days at home. So this is the first home league game of the campaign. Can we get that win, the win we should have had at Watford? A win really that looked in the bag until the last few minutes, but the unconvincing defence again cost us. So. In terms of lineup, I think we will remain unchanged for the third time. We're going to go with the same lineup. I think Moreno will keep his place for some reason, and there's no other real options at centre back. Trent Alexander Arnold, Klopp's been talking about him in the press today, saying that he will be rested, but no Nathaniel Klein. I think Joe Gomez won't be quite right for this one. I think we need to be having as many attacking players on the pitch as possible, and Trent gives you far more going forward than Gomez, who I think might play on Wednesday against Hoffenheim. Maybe Sturridge might come in then as well, but I think it is going to be unchanged uh, and we are the favourites for this game it's a game we should look to dominate obviously without Zaha Palace I mean they, they lost 3-0 at home to Huddersfield the other day they're, they're not looking particularly convincing they've not really signed anyone of note just yet under De Boer I'm sure they're going to be okay eventually but I'm not convinced that they're ready to come to Anfield and, and give us as many problems as they have done in recent years so we are 4-11 to with Skybet here I think Palace are around 15-2 to so no real value in backing us to win can we do it? I mean, I thought Mignolet played very well in midweek, so you know his his woes at Watford uh, should be behind him. Other than that, we just need to be defending set pieces properly. They are a big side, Palace. They got some you know some, some real physicality in there. They've not signed Mamadou Sacco from us, which is a relief coming into this game. It would have been typical of him to to, to have a blind against us if he was playing for them, but that's not the case. So I'm not too concerned with how they're going to line up, especially without Zaha. I think he's he he's always been the danger man. So, look, it's a game I'm looking forward to. I'm going to be going. I'm going to be in the hospitality. Don't hate me for that. It's it's something I got for free, so you know I'm very thankful for that. I uh, hope to meet you, some of you guys, at the game, and just excited to be back at Anfield in the sunshine. And uh, hopefully, it's the start of a run. Obviously, Hoffenheim was was one step in the right direction after that hideous defensive display against Watford. Uh, hopefully, we can continue that going into the rest of the month before the international break with Arsenal looming as well. So we need to keep pace with the with the title leaders, guys like Man City, Man United, who are going to be setting the pace early, I feel. We need to be keeping pace with them and picking up points here. These are the games we need to be winning. We haven't beaten Palace at home for a few years. This is the time we absolutely need to do it, especially with all the transfer stuff looming over us. And I'm going to come on to that now. Obviously, Coutinho, another bid has been rejected. Another 125 million euro bid has come in. A lot of it was in uh, sort of instalments and based on him winning the Ballon d'Or, winning several trophies, winning the Champions League. The bid has been rejected instantly and having seen the breakdown of the bid, it's a no-brainer. A lot of you have been asking me about this. I think as of late, the last sort of day or two, I've been getting more questions from you on Instagram than ever before really about my opinions on the Coutinho situation, whether I think we should go for Draxler and just sell Coutinho and let him go, his head's not in the right place, blah, blah, blah. Is Draxler a good enough replacement for Coutinho? Uh, look, if he's been ousted at PSG, if he's really not made his mark there after being there for only half a season, if he's already being sort of brushed aside by, by the French side who couldn't even win the league last season, then I'm not convinced he's good enough to replace Philippe Coutinho at Liverpool. He's obviously a big name. It's someone that Arsenal have been linked with a lot, and we were in January too. He ended up going to PSG. But obviously it'd be £32 million pounds is the alleged price, obviously that's only sort of a quarter of what we're looking to sell Coutinho for if we are going to sell him at all. So if he was to come in I think we'd need to bring in at least another one or two players as well to replace the creativity of Coutinho. Is Draxler good enough? I, I, I don't watch enough PSG but I'm not convinced, I really don't know. 
uh, should we look more towards a Lanzini? I know he's not particularly popular, not as glamorous. He's obviously playing for a mid-table Premier League club. Some of you might find that unacceptable. You know, it's, it's a tricky one. Insigne still linked. Seri, we've denied our interest in him. Cater maybe still on the, pay, on the table. Paul Joyce says we are looking at alternatives to him, so maybe a midfielder will be coming in regardless of whether Coutinho leaves or not. Uh, off the back of what's happened with Coutinho, this latest bid, my mindset still hasn't really changed. I mean, that was a pretty terrible offer from Barcelona, all those sort of clauses. It wasn't just a straight cash, £120 million pounds or, or whatever that we're looking for. So um, I still think it's pretty 50-50. I expect one more bid. I think the fact that they're putting bids in on the day before a game again just shows you that they're just looking to unsettle the player who's supposedly got a back injury. So, you know, they're, they're really trying what they can and they're desperate to make a statement by Barcelona. They got beaten comfortably by Madrid again in midweek, so they really do need to play catch-up, and I think they're absolutely desperate to get Coutinho in now. They need to improve their squad now, and I don't think Dembele is going to be enough. All this money they've made from Neymar, they need to reinvest it. I'm not sure they would have been able to afford both Dembele and Coutinho uh, before Neymar. I'm still not sure they can now. They've spent some money elsewhere this summer as well, so it's, uh, it's still 50-50 for me. I would sell him as I've always maintained if a good replacement can be found uh, and by a good replacement I don't think Draxler necessarily is that he'd be great for us he'd be great in addition you know he'd be a, we, we thought we were going to sign another attacking player this summer anyway we were linked with Oxlade Chamberlain and a couple of others obviously the uh, tenuous links to Mbappe and Abemian but Draxler would be a good addition to the squad whether he'd start for us I don't know you guys might know better than me how good he actually is but the Seri stuff looks like it's false. Oxley chamberlain actually is still kind of on the table. Cater and Van Dijk are what they are. I think Van Dijk is obviously, uh, is obviously the, the, the most important thing that's going to happen as far as incomings are concerned unless Coutinho goes. So I'm relatively calm about the transfer situation. It is what it is. Uh, when I say calm, I mean, I'm not tearing my hair out like some people. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously desperate for us to sign players, but I, I'm not FSG out. I'm not... I'm uh, going to panic too much just yet, um, but we need, we, we just, we just, I just have to trust Jurgen Klopp, I have to trust Liverpool on this, um, and look, Van Dijk, it's all about him for me, it's, it's all about that defence, because as I've said, I don't think Matip's quite good enough, I don't think Lovren's anywhere near good enough, we are going to need to get a centre back in, but surely, surely we will, surely we'll get somebody, um, whether that be Van Dijk or anybody else, but look, Crystal Palace tomorrow, I'm predicting that we're going to win this game, uh, I, I always predict we're going to win, don't I? But look, it's Crystal Palace at home. We should be winning. They, they lost 3 0 to Huddersfield. They're crap. They've got no Zahar either. I think we're going to win this 3 1. I can't see us keeping a clean sheet, unfortunately, but I can see the front three all getting uh, in on the act. I can see them all scoring, actually. So I'm going to go for Mane, Salah, and Firmino to score. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Do leave a comment with your thoughts on the Coutinho bid. Do you think we were right to reject it? Have you got to the point now where you just think we should let him go? Give me some ideas for replacements as well. And how are you feeling about the whole thing? How are you feeling about Van Dijk? How are you feeling about our midfield? The only, I think the only reason I'm calm is because I'm numb to it. I'm, I'm just fed up of the transfer window. I can't wait for it to be over. I just want us to sign at least two or three players in the time between now and the start of September. Whether that happens, I don't know. Maybe I'll be a completely different mentality in a couple of weeks once the window's over and I know where I stand with the squad. At the moment, I just have to focus on tomorrow, and then after that, maybe I can start panicking again. But I just want to get the three points on the board. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Please do subscribe to my channel for more of this sort of stuff. Drop a like, share the video for me, and follow my other socials. Ben might say on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. See you tomorrow, and see you next time.